I'm going to go over some basic watercolor techniques as well as showing you how to create five different values using one color from a watercolor pan set. So let's get started. On my paper, I'm going to set up an area that I'm going to create five different values in. This is going to be a value scale. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly section off my paper with five different rectangles in one line. And I'm going to label them one, two, three, four, and five. Again, in this space, I'm going to be creating five different values. The value of a color is its lightness or darkness. The number one value is going to be the darkest and it's going to get lighter from there. I'm also going to prepare four other spaces which I'm going to demonstrate different techniques in. I'll be doing a flat wash, fade from dark to light. I'll be demonstrating wet on wet and I'll be demonstrating dry brush. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to be choosing just one color of paint to use and in this case I'm going to use black. I'm going to begin by dipping my paintbrush into water. It's really important to use plenty of water when watercolor painting because the paint is actually dry in the pan until it's activated with water. So I'll begin just by placing my damp paintbrush into my color and just swirling it around to get it activated. Now, when adding water to control the value of the color, I'm going to be placing the color into the lid of my paint set. This is what I'm going to use as a paint palette. So if I want to first create a light value, then I'm gonna place just a tiny bit of paint from the paint set into the lid. I'll rinse my brush off and then I'm going to add water going to do that again. I'm going to start by creating the lightest value for my value scale first because when watercolor painting it's best to work from lightest to darkest so we're going to do the same thing for our value scale. All right I'm going to test this color out and sure enough this is nice and light. As you can see it's not really looking like a black anymore this is like a very light gray. Okay, and if I want to make a little bit more of that, I could just add a little bit more water. If I want to make it darker, I could go over it again too with a second layer, but I think that's pretty good. In fact, it possibly could be even lighter yet. And if I ever get too dark, having a paper towel handy is great because you could always dab some off if needed. All right. Moving on, I'm going to next place down my darkest value on my value scale because I want to be able to see the darkest and the lightest and be able to play with the range in between from there. So for the darkest value, I'm just going to take some paint directly from my paint set here and I'm going to paint that in. And as you can see, that is really dark, right? Really dark but it's still flowing off of my paintbrush because my paintbrush is still very wet, okay? So it should not be, it should not be um, skipping. You should not be seeing any texture in the paper or texture from the paintbrush when you're painting, even with your darkest value. All right, next I'm going to be adding more paint and water to my paint palette or my paint lid to create my different values. So I'll go ahead first, grab a little paint, a little bit more water to this. 
And if I'm not sure, if I'm not sure what this value is going to look like, I can test it out. So let's try it right here and see where we're at. Okay, this looks to me like a pretty good medium value. It seems to be between the black and the lightest color that I have here, the light gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this nice and evenly. Okay, I could always add more if needed. Okay, so now I have three different values. Very light, medium, and very dark. Okay, next I'm going to go with my lighter value next. I'm gonna lighten this up by adding some more water to it. Let's test this out. It doesn't look quite light enough yet, so I'm going to add some more water. A couple drops in there. Let's get some off of my brush. Oh yeah, I think that's going to be good. Okay, I'm going to paint this in. Now, if in the end, if I, if I come to discover that any of these look too similar, I can always add more later. Let's go ahead now and make the darker value. So now I'm going to just get a little bit of that black, mix it in with all that water that I had there. Let's see if we can make, oh yeah, I think that's gonna be perfect for our second number two value. Okay, let's take a look now at all five of these and see how we did. So we have our darkest value, which is solid black. We have our lightest value, which is a very light gray. These two look awfully similar to me. So what I think I could do to make this just one step better is I think another layer of paint here to darken number two up and then actually one more layer here to make a little bit more difference between three and four. I think that would be good. So I'm going to just over in this space here, mix a little bit of water. Let's try this and see. Yep, I think that'll be good. Okay, so I'm just gonna add this on top to darken this one up just a bit more. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add one more layer of the same used for this on top. All right, there we go. Okay, so there you have it. Five different values from darkest to lightest, all with the same color of paint. This is called a monochromatic value scale. Now I'm gonna demonstrate three different painting techniques, beginning with the flat wash, which is what you just saw me do here. But now I just wanna point out that when you're trying to paint evenly, that's called a flat wash of paint. So to paint evenly on your dry paper, you're going to just paint in horizontal strokes or vertical strokes. But the point is you want all your strokes to go in the same direction and you want to paint uh, while, the, while the paint is wet, you want to cover the whole space evenly so that you don't see brush strokes. You want the wash to be as flat and even as possible. For a fade, what I like to do to fade from dark to light is I like to begin by using the darker color that I'd like for the fade, the darker value, like that. I then rinse my brush and then beginning at the bottom, I'm going to add some water in the space up to the top and then just kind of smooth that out again and come back down. I find that that's a pretty good way to get a nice fade without losing too much of the darkest value and still giving myself some of that nice light value at the bottom. So that really went through all the values in my value scale, all in that one section. And again, if you ever need to take paper towel, if, it, if you ever get too, too much, just blot some of that away. Okay, next one, wet on wet. Wet on wet is when you get the paper wet first. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm just going to 
paint a thin layer of water on my paper. You can see my water's already starting to look gray because I've used so much black, it's in need of a refresh. But now on top of there, while the paint, well, sorry, while the paper is wet, I'm gonna just drop in some color. And it's like a firework. Just see it meeting out like that. So it's important to remember when painting, anytime your paper's wet, if you place another color or value right next to a wet space, the color is going to bleed together like this. It's going to not stay where you have placed it. And finally, dry brush. To use a dry brush, the first thing you need to do is uh, dry your brush. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, I'm going to rinse it, and then I'm going to use my paper towel to dry it. And if my paint is really wet, I could also gently get a little bit of the water. Let's just some of the water absorbed from my paint itself because when using the dry brush technique, you want to be able to control the paint and actually make thin lines with it. So without too much water in the paint, you wanna be able to grab some on the tip of your paintbrush and be able to paint like you were using a marker or a pen. So if you want to have a nice tip, you can spin your bristles, kind of turn the brush to get it to a nice point, and then you should be able to paint thin lines. Or if you want to create texture, you can actually take your brush and you can split it on purpose, gently, so that you don't ruin your brush and then take that brush all spread like that and you can actually use your paintbrush to create textured lines like so. I hope this video has helped you understand how to create different values with one color of paint as well as how to create a flat wash, a value fade, Use the wet on wet technique and the dry brush technique in your paintings. Thanks for watching. Bye.